All right, so in the first half of calculus, we asked ourselves uh, the initial question, what is the slope of a tangent line? At a, an exact precise point on a graph, what is the slope of that tangent line? And we had this problem of, well, you can't find the slope of a line with only one point. You need two points. And so we gave ourselves two points, and you know, we, we made it uh, into a simpler problem and then allowed that uh, simpler problem to become a little more complex and we solved it and then we found all these rules and everything so we've, we've solved that problem uh, in large part so now we move on to the second problem in calculus and that would be if for, for some function this one's f of x equals x squared plus one um, we're going to take between zero and one just for instance it could between be between two and three four and seven whatever the left and the right side we want it to be uh, but for this first problem, look between 0 and 1. The question is, what is the area under this curve? Okay, and that's a tricky problem because this curve is irregular. It's not a shape we're used to. Um, and so we realize the difficulty of the area problem. How do we solve a problem like that? Um, uh, if it were a circle, no problem, pi r squared. I just need to know radius, multiply it by itself, and then multiply that by pi, I've got it. If it were a triangle, again, we have that covered, one-half base times height. Even if it were something weird like a trapezoid, we have one-half times height times base one plus base two. It's supposed to look like a b. Um, and there's plenty of other shapes that we... Uh, have formulas for, um, but not a uh, a curve. You know the area under a curve like a parabola. N none of these look like that, and I'm sure you don't have any. Uh, you know, s just locked away in your mind how to find the area under a parabola. Uh, so we have to create a way that no matter what the curve is, we can um, use calculus somehow uh, to find that area. Uh, so what we are going to do is use the most simple, most basic of shapes that we know how to find the area of, and that would be a rectangle. We take the width times the height, and we have the area of that rectangle. So we're going to use rectangles to make this a much simpler problem. Then we're going to use calculus to take it you know, to the extreme, um, just like we did with the, the tangent line problem, we had two points, and then we took it to the extreme by letting those two points uh, approach each other and uh, virtually lay right on top of e each other. So um, that's what we're going to do again, but with uh, rectangles and to find the area of the the uh, area under this curve. So first, let's do the most uh, abhorrent, uh, worst approximations we could make, which would be to just draw a big rectangle. around this thing. It captures all that area. Uh, so it's in there. Of course, this is going to be way off. This is going to have an area of 2, right? 1 times 2. But that's not... The, we're, we're way over. We've got this big chunk here that we've included in the area of the rectangle that is not part of the area under this curve. Okay, so how could we make this better? Well, what we could do is, instead of one big clunky rectangle. If I say triangles when I mean rectangles, forgive me, I probably will several times. Um, but here we'll use two rectangles instead of just one, and that's an even better approximation of the area. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and uh, find the actual area with two rectangles. We, we know that the area with one rectangle is two, um, and so we'll look at the area under these two rectangles. Uh, so first we need the width and the height. Uh, the width would be, well, there's this is spans one, and we're going to split it up into two equally widthed, width, equal width rectangles. We don't have to uh, do equal width, but that makes for a, a more simple problem. Uh, so each will have a width of one half, because we're splitting one into two equal pieces, and that makes one half. So the first width is one half times the height. Well, the height, we're just going to let the right side of the triangle, or the rectangle, 
be uh, as high as the function. So we'll draw up to the function, and that'll be the height of our rectangle. Uh, so when we do that, our height is however high the triangle, the, or the, the function is. Um, so at an x of 1 half, we have 1 half squared plus 1. All right, and the second one, also a width of 1 half, times the height of the function at this point. Okay, this point is all the way to the right of, of this interval we're looking at, and that is 1. So we do 1 squared plus 1. So this is going to be 1 half times 1 fourth plus 1 plus 1 half times 2. And now we have 1 half times 5 fourths plus 1 half times 2. Well, that's just 1. So in the end, this will be 1 plus 5 fourths. So, at 9 fourths. So, two rectangles gave us an area of 9 fourths, uh, or, one po or let's see, 2.25. Um, oh, no, 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 hold on. This is uh, not right. This is what I get for doing it in my head too quickly. This was not 5 fourths, but 5 eighths. 5 eighths plus 8 eighths is 13 eighths. So 13 eighths, or, well, I guess it's exactly 1.625. Um, so 1.625, better than an approximation of 2. 1.625 is smaller. But what would be better even than those two rectangles being 1.625? Um, well, two rectangles was better than one rectangle. So how about four rectangles? It would be better than two rectangles. So uh, we'll get rid of all this, and um, we'll do two rectangles, uh, or four rectangles instead of two rectangles. So now we have four rectangles instead of two. Um, which should be a closer approximation. We're going to be off by only these tiny little slivers, uh, right? Rather than this huge chunk with one rectangle, these two rather big pieces with two rectangles were even better than before. Um, so we'll do this be the, the last specific example. So we'll just do this again. First, we need the width and the height of this guy, and we'll add that to the width times the height of this guy, and the width times the height, the width times the height. The width will be, let's say, they're all the same width. Uh, it's uh, an interval of 1 divided into, we'll assume, 4 equal uh, sub-intervals. So this will be a, a width of 1 fourth, and so will this, and so will this, and so will this. Uh, so that first rectangle, we do 1 fourth times the height of the rectangle, which will be, well, what you know, what is this x value here? How high is the rectangle at this point? Uh, well, it's this, this thing here is going to be, uh, we'll start here and we'll go over by fourths, right? So uh, we'll take, we'll start at zero and we'll add a fourth. That'll give us to this x value here. And we square it and add one. Right, that's what the function tells us to do. So, okay, we've got this uh, width of 1 fourth again. Uh, we're going to go over 1 fourth, 2 fourths. So uh, we're at 2 fourths, or 1 half. Right? Uh, so we're at 0 plus 2 widths of a rectangle squared plus 1. Um, you might think, like, why are you writing it this confusing way? But um, this is uh, more like what we're going to be looking at here in the more general example. So. Um, so if I do it specifically, it, it, I hope will make it a little easier to follow in the, the following uh, discussion. So on to this third one, the yellow one. We are going to take the width of 1 fourth times the height, which is going to be uh, the, the height is going to be how high is the function at this x value, which is 0. We'll go over 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths. We'll start at the left, and we'll add 3 fourths. We'll square that, and we'll add 1. And this last one, this fourth one, 
width of one fourth times we're going to start at zero and go over one two three fourths four fourths square that add one right all of these parentheses are coming from this function here <clears throat> so now I have one fourth times one fourth squared which would be one sixteenth plus one plus the width of one fourth times three fourths squared plus one plus one fourth times uh, sorry, this was two fourths, not three fourths back here, or one half. One half. Uh, here we got three fourths squared, that'd be nine sixteenths plus one plus one fourth times one squared plus one. All right. And um, this I'll just quickly throw into the calculator. That's about 1.469. Uh, so four rectangles give us uh, about 1.469. Uh, so you can see this, uh, our first approximation with one rectangle was bad. It was an area of two. That's way too big. Then 1.625, that's better with two rectangles. 1.469, that's better with four rectangles. Uh, what would be better? Six rectangles, eight rectangles, ten rectangles, twenty, fifty, a million. Uh, if, if we could go just as high as we could possibly imagine having that a number of rectangles be, uh, that would be the best. right? A million, a billion, a trillion. Of course, we don't want to do that these calculations a billion times. That's ridiculous. So that's where calculus comes in. Okay. So let's go more general. So it helps to see a function. It's always a helpful thing. And we'll start at A, right? Between A and B, we want to know the area under this curve. All right, and we know from the previous uh, discussion that we're going to do that by dividing this into a number of rectangles. An infinite number of rectangles would be best. Um, let me draw an example. I guess a, a reference rectangle. There's that, and that, and there. Okay. Of course, this, this rectangle, uh, the, the, the size of it has been exaggerated, so we can look at it and talk about it, but really this would be incredibly, incredibly thin. Right? It would actually, we would want it to have a width of, uh, of a piece of paper divided into a billion parts. Right? A billionth of the, of the width of a rectangle, or of a, of a piece of paper. Um, so, yeah, very, very thin rectangles. But here we can point at it and talk about it. We can talk about things like, hey, look at the height of this rectangle. Well, it's just going to be the height of this function. We'll call this function f of x. It's going to be the, the height of this function after this x value, so we need a way to talk about this x value. Um, well, here the x value would be a, right? And here the x value would be b. And here at a, there will be zero rectangles at a, right? We'll have to move to the right a little bit to actually be at a rectangle, but at A, we haven't, there'd be zero area, right? So it'd be at rectangle zero, right? That'd be our X sub zero. Um, and then when we, you know, split this up into all these infinitely, incredibly, unbelievably thin rectangles, of which that big one is a, an exaggeration, uh, then we come all the way over here to B, and that would be at X sub N for the nth rectangle. Okay, so here we have the this this rectangle is actually the the uh, the first rectangle here. Uh, x sub zero would be right at a. X sub one would be the right side of the first uh, rectangle. Uh, x sub n, whatever that turns out to be, uh, that would be the uh, the x value at the right side of the nth rectangle. And here on the right side of this arbitrary rectangle, could have been here, could have been over there, wherever it is, we'll call it x sub i. 
and this would be the ice rectangle. Okay, this would be the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh ice rectangle, uh, and uh, the nth rectangle. And that's just how that works. That's how we talk about it. It's how we reference them. Um, you know, again, to talk about it, uh, to hopefully beat a dead horse, I guess, that how many rectangles we're going to squeeze in here. Let's draw as close as we can, like right down there. Okay, I'm going to point right there. And right there at that point, let's say that that is our... Uh, what do we have? Maybe a trillionth. Okay. That would, right there is our trillionth rectangle. And uh, so this would put us at two trillion rectangles. You see what I'm doing is just like really exaggerating uh, it, how thin these rectangles are, how many of these rectangles there are going to be. There are going to be an infinite number of rectangles. Okay. Um, so to find the, the area, uh, of each rectangle, and then add them together would look something like this. <coughs> um, we will take the the width of the first rectangle times the height of the first rectangle plus the width of the second rectangle times rectangle times the the height of the second rectangle plus so on so on so on somewhere in there will be the ith rectangle the width of the ith rectangle plus uh, or times the the height and so on and plus the the last rectangle the width of the nth rectangle times the height of the nth rectangle okay um, so let's talk about this width well first let's assume just to make this this problem uh, a little simpler let's assume that width is uh, the same for every rectangle. Um, so, this, this, the width of this rectangle is the same as the width of this rectangle is the same as the width of this rectangle. That makes finding the width of a particular rectangle very simple, right? Because we have n rectangles, split it up into n pieces, whether n be, uh, you know, 90 trillion or whatever. Um, we would take this distance here and divide it into n pieces. At the width of this rectangle, we would just say take a b minus a. That gives us this. If this is 5 and this is 3, then from here to there is 2, right? 5 minus 3 is 2, and whatever the example is. Uh, we'll divide that into n pieces, right? n little subintervals, and that would be the width of any rectangle. The first, the second, the third, the nth, all of the rectangles will have a width of b minus a over n. So that's the width of any rectangle. Um, so now each of those, each of these things has just, you know, w. w is the width times the height of the first plus w times the height of the second plus dot 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 w times the height of the ith one plus dot 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 w times the height of the nth one. So now we have w times the height of the first plus the height of the second plus the height of the third, plus all the way down to the height of the nth. Okay, so how do we find the height at each of these points? That's where it gets a little tricky, but not too bad. Okay, the height of any rectangle, let's look at this, this uh, orange one and, and talk about it. The height, we're going to let it, the right side of the rectangle be the side that goes up and touches the function. Okay, so right here, the rectangle is the height <coughs> of the um, of the function on the right side of the rectangle. That makes it kind of easy because here, this is x sub zero, x sub one. The the x value that we would use uh, for the first rectangle is going to be on the right side of the rectangle. That allows x sub one to be for rectangle one and x sub two to be for uh, rectangle two and so on. So it's better than using the left side. Makes it a lot simpler. Um, so it's f of this x sub i, right? This is hmm, I made a earlier. I wrote y here. This is x sub i. Excuse me. So this is the 
ith x, so the height of the function at x sub i is how high this rectangle is. But still, x sub i is just too arbitrary. How do we find the value of x sub i? Well, if we start over here at a, we're going to move over in increments of a width of a rectangle. We'll move over one width, two widths, three widths, four widths, five widths, and then on, 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 i widths, right? That's how many i widths. So we would take the width and we would say, well, we want to go over i times because we're at the ith rectangle. If we're at the 52nd rectangle, we want to take that width and multiply it by 52, and that'll give us over to here one width, two, three, four, five, six, uh, 52, right? Over to the 52. Uh, so how do we do that? Well, like we said, we'll just start with with a, um, and so this is the the height at an e arbitrary x or no this is the arbitrary x itself so we just start at a and we're going to add on uh, a multiple of the widths of uh, of the rectangles uh, and so we'll multiply that by i we start at a and we'll add on i of these widths uh, if we're at the 52nd rectangle, we're going to start at A, and we're going to add on 52 of these widths. Okay, so the first one will be A plus B minus A over N times 1, because we're at the first rectangle. So uh, that will be good, but it's not just that X value. We want to take that X value, and this is our X sub I. We're going to plug that into the function to get the height of the rectangle. So the height of a rectangle is going to be f of a plus b minus a over n times i. Okay, so this first height is going to be f of a plus b minus a over n times 1, because we're on the first rectangle, okay, that was easy, plus f times a plus b minus a over n times 2. Let's put times 2 on the right side there. So on the second rectangle, and we keep doing this all the way until the very end, at the nth height that we want to find, uh, f of a plus b minus a over n uh, plus, or not plus, times n, because we're at the nth rectangle. Look what would happen there. n would cancel out with n, and we would just get b minus a. Okay, so we'd get a plus b minus a, and so we would just get b. We'd get f of b. So, yes, it's all working out. It's all making sense. Uh, and so now this this width is this uh, this constant thing. So we can replace that with b minus a over n times f of a uh, plus b minus a over n uh, times one plus f times uh, a plus b minus a over n times 2 times 2 plus all the way up to f of a plus b minus a over n times n. Okay, so we've got this uh, this constant times this sum. Okay, so for that we need to uh, refresh our memories on on summation notation, so I invite you to do that. Um, but in the end, what we'll have is we just have this constant times a sum. So we have this constant out in front. Uh, I'm just going to grab another color. I'm going to put this constant out in front. And then when we add all this together, we'll just multiply it by that b minus a over n. So we're going to add up a bunch of stuff here. Okay. Um, we're going to start. Here, we talked about how we have the ith rectangle as the arbitrary rectangle. So we're going to start uh, with i being equal to 1 for the first rectangle. And then we're going to go through all the rectangles until the nth rectangle. That's what the summation notation means right here. Start at i being 1, all the way up to i being whatever n is. n is, you know, 90 trillion or something. Um, uh, so the sum of this expression here, right? We are going to take the function and we are going to start at a and we are going to add 
b minus a over n times i for whichever rectangle we happen to be at at the moment. Okay, so this is the expression that we use uh, to find the area underneath any curve. Um, but just actually, we're missing one little piece, right? What about n? What are we saying about n? Uh, what do we want n to be? n is the number of rectangles, and we want the number of rectangles to be uh, a lot. We want a lot of rectangles. So we want the limit uh, of uh, the limit of this function. What is this approaching as n goes to a lot, right? Infinity. Not a particular number, but a just the, the hugest number you could possibly imagine, and then be even past that. Um, so we'll use this expression. This is just uh, this whole video is just to introduce this expression here. This limit. Um, we have the limit as n, the number of rectangles, goes to a lot um, of the width of a rectangle. Right, the width is as a constant for us at least. Uh, times the the sum of all of these heights, right? We'll add up all these heights, and every one of them needs to get gets multiplied by a width, uh, the same width, and that will give us the area uh, of all of those rectangles added together. And since there's so many rectangles, an infinite number of rectangles, that area will be the same as the area under this curve. Okay, so we'll put this to work in uh, the next video. Uh, I hope that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions.